Hello, my name is Paul and in this video series I want to show you my process of restoring antique wooden molding planes. I do not want to bring them back only into a collector's condition so that they are just shiny and look good, but I want to bring them back into working condition so that I can use these very special tools to add details like round overs or beadings to pieces of furniture that I built. So let's get started. First, I want to talk with you about what a molding plane actually is and what it does. Generally, a molding plane produces a profile that is not structural, like a tongue and groove joint, but purely aesthetic. The easiest molding planes are hollows and rounds, with which you can cut different radii on the edges of the wood. These planes are very versatile, especially if they are used together with a shoulder plane. The number of profiles you can make with only three planes is nearly infinite. On the other hand, there are extremely complex molding planes that are the opposite, as they can only cut one single shape. This makes them a lot less versatile, but predictable, because the profile produced is always exactly the same. This can also be a benefit. Now that we know what molding planes are, let's look at some examples I got from a flea market. They are in the condition I bought them in, I haven't cleaned them since. Some are in good shape, others are not. But I'll try to bring them all back into good working condition. A wooden plane usually consists of three parts. The wooden body, the wooden wedge and the cutting iron. There are different ways to disassemble a molding plane. You could use a small hammer to tap out the wedge out of the plane body. But I don't recommend this technique. As you can see here, the wedge split because the wood fibers can't hold the force applied with a hammer. Now, how else could you disassemble a molding plane? You can use the laws of physics. If you hit the plane body at the end with a mallet, the inertia drives the wedge out. I usually hold the plane upside down like this to support this motion and to catch the wedge and iron before they fall out. It is important to use a mallet with a wide surface and to hit the plane with a full area, not just with the edge. This would cause deep indentations in the wood or even splits. And here we go. Now that we have the plane disassembled, we can start cleaning. If there are, for example, splatters of paint or other strange things on the wood, you first must get rid of them. I always scrape off paint instead of using paint stripper. But if the wooden parts are in such a good condition like these are, I only use fine steel wool to clean the wood. This leaves most of the wonderful patina intact. Because this produces a lot of fine dust, I always wear a dust mask throughout the whole cleaning process.
to protect the wood, I simply wipe on linseed oil. And I do this with a rack. The wooden parts of the planes are clean now. Let's talk about the irons. Luckily, they are not too damaged, but some of them are really rusty. I clean them with vinegar, as it is cheap and not as toxic as other rust removers. A bath in about 12% vinegar solution overnight normally takes care of the rust. To do this, I mix equal parts of concentrated vinegar and water and just put the plain irons in overnight. Now it's the next day and you can see the small gas bubbles around the irons. They are a product of a chemical reaction between the iron oxide and the acid. Those gas bubbles are the reason why you should not tightly close the container. And it's advisable to let it sit in a ventilated area. The vinegar solution can be reused several times, you don't have to throw it away. I clean the metal with a brass wire brush because it is hard enough to clean off the rust, but not so hard that it scratches the intact metal beneath, like a steel wire brush would do.
It is important to dry the irons well and protect them with oil against new rust, as the freshly exposed bare metal is very reactive and would rust again in no time. And again, I use linseed oil and apply it with a rack. If I wanted to restore these molding planes only to be collector's pieces, I could stop now. I cleaned and oiled the wooden parts as well as the cutting iron. The planes now look nice, but they don't perform very well. In the following video, I'll show you the next steps. Checking if the plane soles are flat and, because they are probably not, flattening them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so other people can benefit from it too. Thank you for following along and until next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so other people can en If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so other people can benefit can benefit from it too.